from battering Andy Roddick into retirement to Rafa saying that it doesn't get more competitive than the Serb, this is tennis pros exposing why Novak Djokovic is dangerous. Few things in tennis are more devastating than the way Noel destroyed Roddick at the 2012 Olympics. Roddick was a former world number one with a terrific serve and a Grand Slam winner too. Unfortunately for the American, tennis was changing right in front of his very eyes and he received a reality check playing against Djokovic on grass, his favorite surface. Before I get into what A-Rod had to say about the Serb, let me fill you in on their rivalry. Known for his temper, Roddick would often take swipes at players, and he disliked Novak quite a bit, blaming him for faking injuries to get out of losses. Even more importantly, Roddick had a winning record against the Joker, something not many others can boast. And these reasons led to one of the most devastating performances in tennis history. At the 2012 Olympics, Serbia took on the USA, and Roddick was coming off a great run, winning two of his last three tournaments. In his own words, the battering he took from Djokovic at the London Olympics was so embarrassing that he considered retirement. Eventually going through with the decision only a few months later, age 32. I do understand his point of view. People don't give Roddick the respect he deserves, particularly for his performances on grass, and for Djokovic to outplay him in the manner he did, losing only three games in straights. It's unbelievable. Roddick said the experience was similar to getting beaten like a drum and understood that tennis had advanced well beyond his capabilities. That's how good Novak is, sending modern era greats into retirement. But Andy never played Djokovic at his rip-roaring best. Roger Federer did, and even the Swiss maestro had trouble living with the level Novak brought to the court. Federer and Djokovic played out some classics, some that'll go down in history as the greatest matches ever played. But more often than not, FedEx was on the wrong end of a thrilling battle. Noel's the kind of player who doesn't know when to give up, because how else do you fight back from two match points down at center court against the King of Wimbledon? Fed said that Djokovic squeezed out a win, but it wasn't the first time, with Federer having lost games from a winning position many times to the same opponent. That's also a nod to Djokovic's mental resilience, because tennis hasn't seen a titan like him before. Tennis is a cruel sport where you can lose even after playing the perfect game. Djokovic, on the other hand, doesn't know when he's beaten playing at the best of his capabilities, even if he's two sets down. Federer said that Novak keeps on finding different ways to win, and his mentality to keep going separates him from everyone else in the sport. That's the most you can expect Roger to say about Noel, and it's more than enough. Because if someone like Federer is saying all this, you're definitely doing something right. Uh, the Serbs got some young admirers too. Sorry, Roger, with the new generation calling him the outright GOAT. I see their point. After all, Novak's been making a mockery out of them, which is why Matteo Berrettini realized that playing the Serb was a total contrast to playing anyone else. After losing in almost every slam to Djokovic, Berrettini broke down what it was like losing to Novak. And he said, there are no easy points when you take him on. He makes you work hard for every point, be it your service or a return game. And that pushes you to the point of perfection because you can't make any mistakes. I don't think people understand what Berrettini's saying. He basically pointed out that the best players in the world need to be at the best of their game for every single point played over a best of five. If they do everything right, then they have a chance of beating Djokovic. That's super bizarre. You slip once playing the perfect match and it's curtains. In fact, that's what Matteo meant when he said that he hadn't played badly. He'd kept the same level up for the majority of the game, but it wasn't enough. It could go some way in explaining why Djokovic is impossible to beat in majors. A lot of players from the next gen have won against Novak in a best of three, but five setters are a different game altogether. That's why Berrettini, a much more accomplished player on grass than he's given credit for, got schooled in the Wimbledon final, realizing that his only shot at winning the holy grail of tennis is after Novak's retirement. Maybe Berrettini at his best is no match for Noel, right? So how about taking a look at the best that the next gen has to offer, Carlos Alcaraz. The young Spaniard has reached dizzying heights before even turning 20. 
that players don't in their entire careers. A lot of people put their faith in Carlitos to send the big three home, and he answered the calls by clutching up against Djokovic at the Madrid Open. The one time these two squared up at the major level, though, Djokovic, playing at half capacity, ended Alcaraz's competition, letting him know that Grand Slam Novak is different gravy and he'll need a lot more in the tank to match that level. After his defeat at the 2023 French Open, Carlos added that he wasn't fit enough physically at 20 to match Djokovic's energy levels. Try to register that for a second. The Serb was 36 in 2023, nearly twice as old as Alcaraz at the French Open. How do you defeat someone who can outplay you and outrun you as well? There aren't many ways, and if you ask Pete Sampras, then it's clear that Djokovic is the GOAT. Pistol Pete himself was in GOAT discussions before the Big Three came along, but in his opinion, Djokovic has overtaken him because he killed it in the toughest era ever. That's actually spot on and credit to Pete for admitting it. Djokovic came around when Federer was dominating the tour for fun and Rafael Nadal was all set to take over from Federer around the early 2010s. Instead, Djokovic changed the entire trajectory of tennis history, converting the big two into the big three and now is comfortably the best of the lot after winning the most majors in men's tennis history. Pete also loves how easily Jokers dealt with the newer generation, taming them to the point where the era seems weak enough when in fact, no one can live with him because of his superior level. That consistency, ability to tackle two different generations with relative ease and becoming the year-end number one for so many years. All these reasons point to Djokovic being the GOAT, at least in Sampras's opinion. But even Daniel Medvedev, another former number one and major champion, has called Djokovic the GOAT. Medi was the reason Djokovic didn't win the calendar Grand Slam having won three out of the three majors leading to the U.S. Open final. He lost to the Russian. At the end of the match, Daniel told Djokovic that he was sorry for ruining his history-making moment and added that regardless of the result, Novak was the greatest tennis player in history. That's a big praise and goes to show what the newer generation really thinks of the 23-time major champ who is also the GOAT in his own opinion, not playing around. Novak was asked his view on the GOAT debate, and he said that he's the best. The Serb admitted that comparing different eras isn't easy to do, and that tennis has gotten fairly easy because of better rackets, technology, and courts. Modestly adding how he's happy to be part of the discussion. I do think there's no way Rod Laver at his peak could outrun Novak, though. So that argument is rather futile. He's the greatest of his generation, and this is the peak of tennis. To sum it all up, let's see what Nadal, the man who's played Novak the most times in his career, has to say about it. If you want to understand how dangerous it is to play Djokovic, you need to check out an interview from a few years ago when Rafa was asked by a reporter whether he appreciates having Novak around because he's claimed on many instances that he loves challenges. Nadal's response was hilarious as he admitted to liking challenges, but he's not stupid because what Djokovic brings to the table is absurdly competitive. After all, he's one of only two players ever to defeat Rafa at Roland Garros and the only player to have two wins over the Spaniard at the French Open. If you can school the king of clay at Philippe Chatry, not once but twice, then you really are the GOAT. So from Rafa saying that it doesn't get more competitive than the Serb to battering Andy Roddick into retirement, this was tennis pros exposing why Novak Djokovic is dangerous.